Some events leave a deep mark on history, but none on the land. This is the site of the Battle of Hastings. After almost a thousand years, no traces of the bloody conflict can be seen. But here, the fate of England turned. It's where a king was killed and his victor claimed the throne. October 14th, 1066. We know what happened here on this day, thanks to this. The Bayer Tapestry. A carefully preserved illustrated record of events. It shows the main players. Harold, the newly crowned Anglo-Saxon King of England, and his challenger, William. Duke of Normandy. William claimed the previous king had promised him the crown. So, he assembled an army and prepared to sail to England to fight King Harold for the throne. But a storm thwarted his plans. Meanwhile, Harold discovered that a Viking invasion had landed in the north another threat to his crown, so he raced to fight them. In France, William waited for the right conditions to sail across the Channel to England. The weather cleared. He seized his chance. Two hundred and fifty miles north, Harold had defeated the Vikings. Now, hearing of William's arrival, his army sped south. At nine o'clock in the morning, on this hill, William's Norman army were ready to do battle with Harold's Anglo-Saxon men. The stage was set, and up for grabs, England itself. Ah, here is the battlefield, yes. William of Normandy stood ready for battle at the base of a hill. The high ground belonged to King Harold of England and his Anglo-Saxon army. Here, on this hilltop, the fate of England would be decided. Attack his army! We can only have control of this forward guard. Move up, boys! Attack! Looks like the archers aren't actually doing any damage. Though William's army fought fiercely against the shield wall, it would not yield. As one man fell, another took his place. Overlapping shields in tight formation made for a near impenetrable barrier. Our leader has the ability attack speed. He can rally nearby allies, increasing ranged attack speed and melee attack speed for 15 seconds. We need to feign retreat. Fall back, boys. Fall back. Causing them to break formation. Here they come. William's feigned retreat was working. All right, hit him now. Anglo-Saxon army broke their shield wall formation, leaving gaps. They have a William huge formation over here that built on the side. Another one that built on this side. We're gonna try and deal with them one at a time, if at all possible. With Harold's men no longer in shield wall formation. William could pick them off as they charged. All right. We're getting encirclements here. It's really strong for us. Be able to cut down the Normans. They actually have, I think, some unique models here. It's mo oh, I guess they're just militia. That's in the base game. 
finish them off. Pick off the reinforcements. Come on, ar archers, please don't just stand there. Help me. Oh, here they come. Are they actually going to interact with the, uh, the forces here? I think we need to come in and smash these guys. They're not engaging altogether, that's to our advantage. We can use the attack speed buff here to help us get through them. For England! Oh dear, here come all the of their Saxons spearmen. Rows of spearmen to push back the invaders. But William had an answer. Okay. Sharp -eyed archers. We want to be able to group our archers as together as much as possible. Fall back, catch these. Alright. We lost. No, it doesn't look like we lost any archers. Good, good. William doesn't have his buff yet. We'll call the archers uh, two. We have all our melee guys together and all of our archers together as well. Oh good, reinforcements. Okay, get in there. That's so many. And more. Into the breach. How's William doing? William's almost got his attack buff. We probably want to make sure it's in range. Get over here, William. No. There we go. Use the buff and fall back. He has a regeneration factor, so he'll be able to heal up the damage that he has sustained. Anglo-Saxon archers joined the fray, and the Normans' deadly cavalry ready to charge. But first, William's forces had to eliminate the enemy spearmen, whose sturdy pole arms could easily bring down a horse. Putting on the flank. Waiting. We don't have access to our cavalry yet until we wipe out the enemy spearmen. Put the men at arms forward. William, do you have a buff for us? Not yet. Not yet. We have a huge mass building up here on the left flank. The center is not faring as well where the enemy archers, I think, are focusing more of their forces, more of their attention. Right, get these guys up here. There we go, now we have the calf. With the threat of spearmen cleared from the field, William's cavalry was free to charge at the Anglo-Saxon archers. Alright, finish off the archers quickly now, quickly. Get these guys up. And put William himself in here. Oh, we're close to be able to get at, at Harold himself. The Anglo-Saxon army was in disarray. There it is. Their shield wall had been neutralized, and their numbers were dwindling. Now the only thing. Get the attack speed buff going, and then get in there, kill the king against King Harold. He shows himself. I'm worried about the enemies over here on the flank. If they come across right into the archers, then we're going to be in trouble. But if they go into the melee fray, then we'll do much better. What are you doing? William, why are you just running around like this? William! William! Get him! There's King Harold, I think. Yeah, there he is. No, he's doing another lap. Ah, there we are. The Anglo-Saxon King Harold had fallen. In the confusion, some loyal soldiers fought to the death, while others scattered in panic. Leaderless and defeated, 
the last of the Anglo-Saxon army fled for their lives. The Normans celebrated victory over the English king, but William's quest to rule England was just beginning. And the conquest of England has begun. The game has these high quality historical videos set as unlockable rewards for progressing through the campaign, so I'm going to try and show those off at the end of the campaign battles where I unlock them. We'll go through what we have unlocked here. This Norman Conquest video was just what we got to see at the beginning, but I'll get to show off these other ones at the end for those who are interested. At Guédelon in France, to understand how castles were constructed, they're building one from scratch using just the tools and materials of the medieval age. It's a 25-year project, the world's biggest archaeological experiment. The most important defensive feature of any castle was the wall surrounding it. Castle walls had to be incredibly thick in order to resist attack and absorb the impact of projectiles fired from trebuchets. The curtain wall was over 20 feet deep, interspersed with towers. In earlier Norman castles, they were square. But while on crusade, European knights saw that eastern towers were round. They realized that eliminating corners not only made them stronger, but also provided a better view of the surrounding landscape. Completing the walls will take some 30,000 tonnes of sandstone. Transport costs in the Middle Ages were incredibly expensive. So having a good supply of local stone close to the castle was vital. To extract it from the quarry, first a row of holes is hand drilled. Once all the holes are ready, I'm ready to put in the iron wedges and I'm ready to split it open by hitting very hard on each wedge with a big sledgehammer. The stone is split into usable blocks, then transported using horsepower and human effort. This treadwheel crane can lift up to half a tonne the walls are built like sandwiches. On the outside, you have facing walls built from better quality stones. And the inside, the rubble cores, they're built with softer stones and other offcuts from the quarry. And they're built up in layers with a very thick, coarse mortar. This ingenious method makes the walls better able to withstand hits from a trebuchet. Sandstone is too hard to be carved into intricate windows, vaults and steps. Instead, softer, more expensive limestone is used. These sophisticated building techniques make castles the ultimate feats of medieval engineering. It's a testament to their construction that so many still stand today.